Hello, welcome to episode 249 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 11th of May. So welcome everybody, I hope you all had a lovely crafty week. Today I've got some knitting, some crochet, some sewing, a question from the Ask Me Anything thread, some information on my shop which will include um, some plans to do some tutorials as well which I'll talk about in the shop update section and then a little appearance from Jensen at the end of the podcast. So we've got a few make-alongs going on in the Ravelry group and on Instagram at the moment. Details are in the description bar down below and also uh, the hashtags are on the screen as well. So do come and join in. We have the last month of the Retro Mal this month, so at the end of the month I'll be drawing prizes for that, so that one will be coming to an end soon. So let's get on with the knitting, shall we? I have a finished object to show you. So last week, or two weeks ago, because um, last week I had a sort of a bit of a tutorial video, the week before I showed you that I was working on this cardigan. Now this cardigan is called the Baby Vertebrae Cardigan by Kelly Van Nykirk, and it's been knitted in some sport weight yarn, which is a Zauber ball. Um, and actually Adam's mum knitted most of this and I did the rib all the way around the front because she doesn't like doing that bit so I didn't mind doing that um, but the Zyber ball is all self striping so you get this really cool effect um, so you've got the stripes all down the body but then the arm stripes don't match exactly um, but it doesn't matter I don't think you really notice that uh, but obviously they match at the top because it's part of the same um, round then um, this cardigan isn't designed to go around the front of a child, just sort of goes around the sides so you get less sort of spills down the front. I find that previous versions that I've got for Jensen um, are really, really useful, so I thought another version of this would be brilliant. So this is a sport weight yarn and the pattern is actually written for fingering weight, DK and Aran weight yarn. Because this is sport weight, I just thought I'll follow the instructions for the four ply version and it'll just be a little bit bigger and then it'll last a bit longer. So it is a little bit big on Jensen, but it's, it's fine to wear now. It's not too big for him to wear, but it has lots of growing room in it. So I got him to put it on when we went for a walk earlier so I'll put that bit of footage at the end of the video in the what Jensen's wearing section so you can see what it looks like but I'm really pleased with how that comes out so the pattern only goes up to two years though and this is the size just below that so I think it's sort of 18 to 24 months and then there's a two-year version this is the one down from the largest size so it's a shame that it doesn't go any bigger because it's a very usable cardigan. I think though because it's knitted in sport weight it'll last that little bit longer anyway so I think he'll probably be all right till he's about three to wear these. Um, so there we go that is the first finished object I've got to show you. The next objects are all works in progress so I've made quite a bit of progress on the two pairs of socks that me and mum were knitting together they are all in the DPN cases at the moment, so I shall undo these. So these are following my simple top-down sock pattern, which is a plain sock with a 2x2 two two ribbed cuff, um, slip stitch heel, and then you've, you've got a heel flap and gusset construction. And I've basically knitted till the decreases are finished, so mum can knit the foot bit, because she doesn't like doing increases or decreases or anything that's above sort of knit or just purl. <laughs> And I have tried to get her to do more complicated things, but she just doesn't enjoy it. So I said, do you know what, Mum? It's okay. We can work on things together. So I've got these two pairs that I've been working on. This one is an opal yarn. I will see what the number is. I did sell these in my shop, this particular colourway, but it sold out. I actually nabbed the last skein, I'm afraid. So the colourway is number 11002, and that was out of... The memories collection um, of the opal yarns and I love how this stripe and then you've got this variegated grey and black um, going down the back there I've just knitted it all in the same yarn I don't mind that you sort of get a different design down the heel flap and gusset um, I think that comes out really pretty so that's that opal and then this one here, this was a lovely gift actually um, from my friend Julianne. Um, I think it was you, Julianne, anyway, thank you very much. <laughs> this one is a really pretty yarn that's, that's based on a colourway designed by Kay Facet, and it is a Regia. And the colourway is 03773. Um, 
so that one's come out like this and this is knitted in the same pattern my simple top down sock pattern which is a free pattern on Ravelry and on my website I'll leave links to those in the description bar down below um, but you can see I've got to the same point where I finished the foot decreases so mum can just knit plain until it's long enough for the toe decreases and then she can pass it back to me to knit on so those two have come on nicely and now I can give them to mum to work on so I'm not quite sure how long those will take because we, I've obviously I don't see her all the time because she lives in Shrewsbury but um, they'll be finished before Christmas the pair anyway so I have a new cast on from the knitting section and I am loving loving these mittens so I had the songbird mittens by Erica Hooser on my make nine list for this year and I've just made a good start so this is how they are looking so far so this is knitted in some Jameson and Smith four ply yarn in these two colorways I've picked I can tell you what the colourways are actually if I look at the two balls that I've unopened. So the pink colour is number 1283, um, the pink, and then I have a like a purpley grey colour which is FC21. So that's the two colourways. I've got two balls of each and that should be enough to finish the mittens. So the thing that I've changed with this pattern is I've actually started on 2.5 millimetre needles rather than the called for needle size 2.75. It's really unusual for these these sort of knit mittens to be on 2.75 millimetre needles, the, the ones that I've knitted anyway, they normally say like 2.25 and I think, whoa, that's way too small for me. <laughs> but it's got a similar stitch count to what I've used before. Um, so I've decided that I'm using 2.5 millimetre needles because I know that this width fits me really nicely. So if you can see, if I'd have done them on a bigger needle, they'd have been quite wide. I think I've got quite narrow wrists and narrow hands. So I'm staying with the 2.5 millimeter needle. So I'm really enjoying how that's coming along. I've gone for quite a subtle color change, but I think you can see the color change enough for the pattern to show. Obviously I won't quite see until I've started the actual bird pattern at the top of the mitten, but it's got a really pretty motif around the sort of cuff edge and I'm excited to get on with these. I actually had knitted these already by last week when I recorded the video on knitting needles and I was showing how I knit using these higher higher flyer trio needles with three needles there so I'll leave a link to that video if you want to have a look how I knit with these uh, needles you you have those two on the work and then a working one as well um, but I, I do show how I knit how I knit with them on last week's video which is a sort of an overview on all the needles that I like to use and what I use them for so that it'll help people choose um, their needles and it was also a bit of an overview on the interchangeable needles because there's a bit of a complicated system on um, sort of miniature small and large cables with different sizes of tips that fit on each so if you're if you're a bit confused about that there's a video I uploaded last week so those are on the needles and I'm really excited to knit on those but actually this last week I've been working on some crochet so I'm swiftly moving on to my crochet section now and I had already started on the last uh, podcast I'd, uh, I'd done a tiny bit of this sock but I've actually finished one sock and I'm almost done on the second sock as well so this sock is the Gaspet Gaspietti I'm not sure how, how you pronounce that but I will leave a link in the description bar down below I bought it as a leaflet from the East Anglia Yarn Festival from the Vicky Brown stand and she'd got a load of really lovely crochet socks which I've never really thought I thought oh crochet socks they won't stretch very much I avoided those but I saw what a lovely display she'd got and lovely and they just looked really nice and they looked like they'd fit really nicely so I thought I'd have a go as well so here we are so these are going to be for Adam I knitted the medium size on the actual pattern and they come up actually they they fit pretty pretty well when he's got them on they look really nice and they fit perfectly although um what I should have done is probably done the large on the leg and the, the medium on the foot because it is a little bit tight going over the heel but once he's got them on they fit absolutely perfectly so it's probably just as well that they're a little bit tight just to get on because they will stay up better I think. 
So because they're crochet, they're a little bit thicker than the normal fingering weight socks. I think they're probably similar to a DK sock knitted um, in this crocheted form in terms of thickness of the yarn um, but I do think that the shape of the foot fits perfectly it's just that getting over the heel this leg of the socket is a little bit on the tight side but to be honest that only takes a second to slip it over your foot and then it fits really nicely what I will do is when I finish these I will get Adam to model them on next week's podcast so that you can see what they look like on properly when I actually looked at the notes on how to choose the sizes I looked at the size of shoe size rather than the actual measurement around the ankle and I should have gone for the large round the ankle but do you know what it still fits when they're actually over the um, heel so I'm quite happy with what I've knitted up now. Vicky's got some good advice on how to choose your sizes and how to make sure that you're knitting a sock that fits as well so I'd recommend the pattern. I've never done a crochet sock before so it was very exciting so there we go we have a pair of socks nearly <laughs> I'm, and I'll be excited to get Adam to model those on next week's video so because these are crochet socks I've used a little bit more yarn than normal but I think I'll have plenty with a 100 gram skein um, but I weighed this sock and I think it came up uh, about 45 50 grams I think um, so if you have got larger feet you might want to use more than 100 grams of yarn um, but there we go that's how I've got on with my crochet I'm excited to get these finished so I can get another crochet thing cast on because I did buy that little fox kit from the Toff stand at East Anglia Yarn Festival as well that I want to make a start on um, so that is my crochet section my next section is sewing now you might not be able to see in the shot actually because I'm um, I was sat quite low on the camera but I've got a new t-shirt that I've made so this is an Agnes t-shirt and this is a pattern by Tilly and the Buttons if I stand back a bit you might be able to see a little bit better so so this is a pattern by Tilly and the Buttons and I have made some modifications on this when I've traced the pattern out so I find that I've got quite narrow shoulders compared to the size of my hips here. So when I actually cut out the pattern, I cut out the smaller size on the shoulders. I can't remember what size I cut out now around the shoulders generally. I tend to check back to my Agnes pattern to see what I've chosen um, every time I every time I go to cut out a new Tilly in the Buttons pattern because I know then that it will fit me nicely so I have a, I think it's the size 6 on the shoulders and then I grade out to like the size 10 um, which is obviously Tilly in the Buttons size it's not a normal UK size um, but and then I make sure that when I actually sew these up lately I've been doing it so I actually don't use the one and a half centimetre seam allowance around the sides so that it gives me just that little bit of extra room there so it's nice and baggy um, so the Agnes t-shirt at the moment is my favourite t-shirt out of the t-shirts I've made in my wardrobe because I've lost a bit of weight and I find that this sort of seems a bit more flattering than the Frankie t-shirt that used to be my favourite um, when I was a bit heavier. I have actually cut the sleeve to a length um, that I sort of fancied. I compared it to some of my um, ready to wear t-shirts um, marked on the pattern and cut a piece so that it was a short sleeve pattern because the actual pattern comes up to the elbow or a long sleeve one I think and it might come up in three quarters as well I can't remember but I did have to sort of draft out the length that I wanted myself now this gorgeous fabric is from you and me Mabel and Sally from You and Me Mabel has actually given us a discount code, I think it was last month, but it runs out the end of this month and it is Craft House 10 and I'll leave, in, I'll leave a note of that in the description bar down below as well. But this fabric is a cotton jersey from Dashwood Fabrics. Um, that I purchased from Sally's shop. Um, Sally does normally do a lot of sort of quilting fabrics but she does have a few of these jersey materials. So the Agnes pattern is made strictly for sort of stretch fabrics otherwise it wouldn't fit properly around the shoulders and that but I love this pattern and how this has turned out. It's nice just to have a nice simple t-shirt pattern for a gorgeous print like this. So there we go that is my sewing for this week unfortunately I am wearing it so Barbara has not got her moment of fame this week either <laughs> oh dear so next is my ask me anything section so I have a question from the Ravelry group um, from somebody called Bouncy 
I don't know what their actual first name is because they didn't have it on their Ravelry page. But the question was, I missed your last Barbara's Day Out in April. Are you planning to continue them? As I'd love to come along in the future. Now, I, we're definitely going to have more Barbara's Day Out. I just haven't picked a date yet. It will be sometime probably in June or maybe July. Just to see how it goes. I will announce it in next month or so just so that you've, you've got the date ahead of time to pop it in your diaries. Um, so I was thinking about having them every sort of two or three months um, so that we can all meet up and have a chat about crafty goodness. And I really like the venue that we've chosen recently, that's Dunstan Hall, because it feels a bit fancy having a nice cup of tea in there and they do quite nice chocolate brownies as well. <laughs> so it's always nice to have a little bit of a treat and to feel it like it's a little bit of a special outing. So the next section, shop update. So you have the last chance to pre-order the May and June yarn clubs or just the May yarn clubs and they will be taken down on Monday. Um, I'm planning to get them shipped by the 19th of May. I have updated my website in terms of the higher higher fixed needles to make it more concise and all together so that they're easier to find. So now I have a separate listing for steel fixed needles, for steel sharp fixed needles and then bamboo fixed needles. So when you select the material you'd like you then go into the listing and then you can choose which length of cable you want and then what actual tip size you want so it's easier to sort of find otherwise there was too many listings on my website. <laughs> it just makes it easier for people to find hopefully and like I said earlier I did upload a video last week to help people choose knitting needles because people are always asking me about the different types of needles that you can get and I just thought it might be helpful to have a video on that so that if you're unsure about what needle to order then you can watch the video and then if you do have any further questions you can email me and I'll be happy to answer those. So after last week's um, tutorial I did on the needles and I also posted on the community tab asking people what they thought about the odd tutorial video instead of an actual podcast I had 80% of people saying that they would like tutorials as well so I will mix those in with the podcast episodes as I'm going along especially if I feel like oh this week I haven't done an awful lot of craft I'll do a tutorial instead and then it'll be a more full episode the next week the next two weeks I'm going to have tutorials on there for you because next week I've got an idea of something, um, a sewing thing to show you which is also knitting related as well um, and I thought I'd do two videos recorded next week and then I'm having the week after I'm going to have a little break um, and I'll be back with you for a proper full episode the week after that so two weeks there'll be tutorials for the next two weeks. Um, but they will be a scissor case um, so you can pop in your knitting bag or just one of your sewing kit and I'm going to do a tutorial for my DPN case as well and I was thinking about putting some kits together for the fabric for those so that you can buy the kit of all the things you need um, to make those up so but there'll be free tutorials on YouTube they will be up next Thursday and the Thursday after and then the one after that will be a normal podcast episode just because um I thought it'd be nice to have something that's sort of sewing but also knitting related as well and then it gives me chance to have a bit of a break but still be able to upload a video and have lots of content hopefully to show you the week after. So now it's over to you Jensen and your new cardigan. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and even click that bell to get notifications of new videos and I shall see you on the next episode. Bye!